Hey, I'm glad for what I can feel now deep in my heart. I'm glad that I know, that I know, that I know that I've been saved. I'm not worried about what the future holds as far as my salvation is concerned. I settled that a long time ago. A 17-year-old boy that knelt and experienced the grace of God. And I'm thankful now, 40 years later, I'm still experiencing the grace of God. Just as saved now as I was then. Only difference between now, now and then is that I'm closer now than I was. Any day now, the Lord's going to come get his people. And I tell you, we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to shout the praises. Can I let you in on a little secret tonight? He is no more God now than he'll be then. And he's no more God then than he is now. Somebody said, I'm going to praise him when I get over there. He's worthy of praise on the journey. Don't have to wait till you get there. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Well, I appreciate this good choir tonight. Great singing. I appreciate Laura Branch for coming out and helping us in this meeting. It's been good every night. I tell you, every night I'm like the fellow that had the, the speech impediment. It just gets gooder and gooder. <laughs> Amen. And tweeter and tweeter. Every night. We're going to ask our ushers. We're going to receive an offering tonight. We're going to make sure that we take care of the man that uh, lent us this tent. And he didn't charge us anything, but I feel like that we ought to take care of it. And uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to take care of our singers and our preachers and, and all those things. And so tonight we're going to receive this offering. If you have something to give, it would be most appreciated. If you don't have anything to give, it don't make any difference. You're just as welcome in the house of God. And we're here tonight to worship. So let's not let anything hinder us and stop us. We tell the church sometimes, you know, the Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And that means to get excited about it. I'd like to see somebody shout one time while we're taking up the altar. <laughs> Just one time. To shout. Because to be able to give back to him after all that he's done for us, what a blessing that is. <laughs> Would you stand tonight with us? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you have been so gracious to us. Lord, what a privilege it is tonight to be able to feel the Holy Spirit. Lord, as you've come, Lord, and you've led us in this time of worship, Father, we're so thankful. And I pray tonight, Lord, that you'll bless every person that's under this tent. Lord, you know the needs of this hour. You know hearts that need to be touched. You know lives that need to be changed. I pray, Father, that you'll do a work this evening that we'll be talking about for days to come, Lord, the great things that God done under this tent. Father, we love you this evening. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll bless the singers as they come to sing for us. Lord, anoint the preaching tonight. We know that all is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down. And Lord, I, I'm here tonight to testify that you have come down. Lord, you're dwelling among your people, Lord, and we're so thankful. I pray, Father, that everything that's done this evening may it honor and give praise to the name that's above every name. It's in Amen. Just remain standing as we take up the altar.
Thank you, choir, for representing our Lord like you did tonight. That was wonderful. Thank you. In a few moments, we've got some special singers with us this evening, the Pattersons, and we're looking forward to them coming as well and uh, singing for our Lord. And uh, as soon as they're done, Joy, you just come on and share your heart with us, okay? And, uh, you keep praying. Uh, I'll say this tonight, and we've said it night after night, but if the Lord speaks to your heart, Tubs on your heart to come to this altar and pray. You don't have to wait for invitation. When he gives it, that's when it's acceptable to come. Uh, if it's during the singing, if it's during the preaching, and the Lord bids you to come, you come. Okay? You listen to him. Batley, can't mean put your hands together and welcome the Pattersons as they come. Here. sounds strange, don't it? Talk about a tent revival. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm thankful tonight the Lord's allowed me to be a part of this week. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, uh, I, I can't explain the uh, excitement that I've had. Uh, you know, I'll be uh, just uh, uh, frank with you uh, this evening. I woke up this morning at about 2.30 and I ain't been back to sleep since. I mean, I've just been thinking about the service and I've been thinking about what the Lord's done and and how the Lord is blessed, and I, I tell you what, the singing so far has just thrilled my soul and blessed me. And these preachers that have preached, Lord have mercy, they preach what I needed. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I tell you, they preach what I needed to hear. And uh, I appreciate Jerry and bro, uh, bro, uh, Brother Jerry and, and Brother Mike. And I, I wore my hat tonight. I thought I might look a little taller in it. If I, had my hat. Uh, I think I took it off before Jerry seen me. Though. And, uh, 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 amen. But the Lord's been good, and I'm glad. And it's just, I mean, it's just a blessing to be here. And I do desire your prayers. And, Brother Luke, I appreciate the Lord laying it on your heart to invite me to be a part of this, this meeting this week. And I love you, and I appreciate you. And, and uh, amen. I just want to thank you for obeying the Lord and, and blessing me uh, by your obedience tonight. I tell you, when Brother Luke called me, I was on the back porch talking to him. And uh, when I hung up and from the phone as we talked, uh, there was a, a thought come to me, a scripture, and uh, it's been with me ever since. This scripture has. I'm going to read a couple more tonight, but this scripture has. And uh, then uh, when the McCainies got up uh, Monday night singing, Lord have mercy, I thought, Lord have mercy, how the Lord's got things lined up this week. Amen. Amen. And I knew the Lord was in it just as soon as... They got up singing, and Peggy was testifying and talking about uh, the song that's going to sing about Elijah. And that's what the Lord laid on my heart as soon as uh, we got off the phone, Luke. And I then I heard her talk about you been preaching on it some, so I guess we're going to get a little repeat some of it tonight. Amen. But it'll be all right. You pray for me for just a few minutes. If you want to turn in 1 Kings chapter 18, I'm going to read some there in 1 Kings chapter 18. And sounds like I've got another verse I'm going to share that I, it sounds like just from what I hear, it, it, it maybe it was shared Sunday here at your church, but it's what's on my heart and I'm going to share it. I guess you're going to get a double barrel, amen? I mean, uh, amen, an over and under or something, amen. Uh, the Lord wants us to hear for some reason. So in uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 18 tonight, and we're going to start reading in verse number 41. And I'm just going to share with you tonight that some thoughts the Lord's laid on my heart quickly. And I'm going to try my best to get out of the way. And, and trust tonight that you'll obey the Lord and, and let the Lord just move in a great way tonight during the invitation. So in, in 1 Kings chapter 18, in verse number 41, the Bible says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of uh, Carmel, 
and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the, in the meanwhile that the heaven uh, was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and he girded up, he girded up his loins and ran uh, before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. You know, I think about tonight, and I'm going to preach uh, for a little while tonight on this thought, uh, uh, little things that mean a lot. Little things that mean a lot. I want to share that thought with you tonight, and I want you to just uh, pray for me for just a few minutes tonight. And I, as I said, you know, just thinking about this service and just thinking about being outside tonight, you know, everything that, uh, uh, you know, you think about in the Bible and the things that Jesus done and, and the apostles and, and the things that we read about tonight, uh, there was a lot of good meetings that was held outside when you think about it. Amen. It reminds me of what Paul told uh, uh, King Agrippa. He said, Agrippa, you thou knowest this thing was not done in a corner. Amen. What God done, uh, God does it for everybody to see tonight. You know, the thing about it, that, uh, amen, the greatest event to me in history of all mankind is when Jesus Christ uh, went to the cross and died between the heavens and the earth and, and, and gave his life. And so, uh, you know, God works outside. Amen. A lot of us, you know, uh, amen, think about God when we go inside a church house and uh, when we think when we go inside a uh, maybe a, a building, you know, and, and it's got a steeple on the top of it and, and there's benches on the inside of it and there's a piano and, and, and you know, uh, you know, there's a, a, a maybe a, a, an altar in front. But I'm going to tell you something tonight, friends. I, I, amen. I'm telling you, God, amen, is not I, I concealed within four walls. I'm glad tonight that, amen, as well as they said a learned song about how God creating the heavens, the, the moon and the stars. I, I, if you're sitting right over there, the moon's right there. Amen. You can look right up and, and see that moon shining up there. And I'll tell you what, amen, ain't it good to be friends with the one uh, that hung the moon and the stars tonight. Amen. And so uh, this story tonight I shared with you and, and these scriptures that were, uh, uh, amen, that we've read about tonight. Elijah, amen, was, amen, had, had, had been in a great meeting. I mean, friend, uh, amen, uh, just uh, just had a had a contest with the prophet of Rails and the prophet of the groves. And, and, and you know, uh, you know, the Bible says that, amen, that he prayed and God sent down the fire. And we know, amen, what happened. He asked the children of Israel, he said, how long halt ye between two opinions? And, amen. And, and you know, Baal and all the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove, they prayed and they cried all day long. And I, I'm going to tell you something, friends. I, amen. It ain't the pride that you pray that matters. I, it's who you're praying to. Amen. I, I, that counts tonight. I'm telling you what tonight. I, I, there's a lot of praying goes on every day. I, I, but unless you're praying in the name of Jesus, I, unless you're praying as a child of God tonight, I, or unless you're praying to become a child of God tonight, I, amen, your prayer ain't going far, friends. I, I mean, amen, Elijah knew I, I, who he served, amen. I, I, God then showed him he's going to shut up heaven I, for three and a half years, and, amen, and God then took care of him, amen. I, I, God fed him with the ravens for a little while, I, and then God sent him up to a little widow's house, I, amen, and she's making her last little cake, I, and he said, amen, before you make the last little cake, I, I, for you and your son, make me I, a little bread, amen. I, I'm telling you what, I'm preaching and not about little things I, I, that mean a lot, amen. I, I mean that little stick I, I, that lady had, I, I, she said, I'm making just a little piece, I, a cake for me and my son, I, and then we're going to die. I, and I'm here to tell you, like you said, I, amen, if you'll just go I, and make me one first, I, and then come back I, and make you and your child one, I, and she obeyed the Lord. I, it was a little thing, I, but just 
for that revival, you're going to send out Dr. Han Lattley, Baptist Church out there in the field. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that crowd you've been sending. Every night, amen. I, I, as, as somebody said last night, I, I, maybe they did Monday night. I, I didn't. Hey, if I was riding down the road and I lived around here, I'd look over and say, what in the world is going on over there? What, you, you know why? God's putting a witness on me. Somebody's done some praying. When I got out of the car Monday night, I, I felt something grab a hold of me out there in the parking lot. Amen. And it began to draw me this way for the mic. Amen. I knew somebody had been praying. Somebody had been doing some Elijah talking to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. Amen. Y'all feel what I feel. Y'all been feeling what I've been feeling. Do you, I, I mean, I'm asking for a witness here. Have you all been feeling what I've been feeling when you get out of your car, out of here in the parking lot, amen, and start walking towards this tent? Oh, Lord God Almighty. I, I mean, somebody's been a praying. It's a drawing. Elijah was praying. And I'm here to tell you, somebody was listening. Amen. Prayed, and he said, go look. And his servant <coughs> went and looked. And he come back, and he said, ain't nothing going on out there. See, out towards Mount Carmel, I remember that visit, Brother Luke, when we was up there on Mount Carmel. That tour guide, if I remember him right, said that about every storm they had come out of that Mediterranean Sea over there, and it's on the other side of Mount Carmel. So when they knew it was going to rain, they'd go up to the top of Mount Carmel and they'd look over there when they seen, hey man, Nick, when they seen the clouds brewing, they knew they better look out. It was fixing to come on out there. And hey man, he prayed the second time. Hey man, he said, go look. And he came back the third time. And he said, he ain't a thing. And he went the fourth. I wonder how many of us is going to make the fifth trip. Hey man. Are going to make the sixth trip. Amen. I wonder how many of us are going to say, okay, I'm going to go one more time. I'm because, listen, friend, when the seventh time he went and took his trip, guess what happened? He come back. And I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I mean, I walk about three miles every day. And I get out there every day just about, and I walk about three miles. And I've been out there walking doing this. <laughs> and if I was a meteorologist, I'd say that's a zero percent of chance. <laughs> <laughs> Even this show, that's about a zero percent. <laughs> Amen! But I'm here to tell you later. Hey, I, I Luke, I, I mean, I mean, Elijah I knew who he was talking to. He knew who he was praying to. He knew, amen, that it was just a little cloud, but there's a little things that mean a lot, amen. And he said, hey, help, you better get up and run down here because the rain is fixing to come. Listen, I may never get to see the rain, but I'd like to see the cloud jerk. You understand what I'm saying? I want to see the cloud. Maybe my little Bubby back there. Maybe Bubby. Maybe Bubby over there, two years old, my grandson. Luke, maybe he'll get to feel the rain. I just want to see the cloud. Oh, I, I, want, to, I, mean, I want to see a little something that'll mean a lot. Then I can say, listen, Wyatt, listen, there's a day coming. God's going to open up heaven. And for you out of blessing, you can't contain them. I want to have something to give him 
that he'd hang on for the rest of his life. Huh? A lot of us are worried about silver and gold. And Brother Mike talked about last night. Worried about what kind of financial shape we can help our kids be in or our grandkids be in. And just to, just to be honest with you, until somebody earns what they get, they don't really appreciate what they got anyway. I mean, that's the truth. Amen. And so you can leave them what you want. They'll probably have a party and spend it, and you work your finger to the bone. But I'm here to tell you, if you'll give them Jesus, amen, when they need him, they'll appreciate the little gift you gave them. Amen. to my second, my second one here. Hang in here with me. I'll tell you how excited he got. Some of y'all wonder why the preacher gets excited sometimes. Some of y'all wonder why. Well, I'm telling you what, he got so excited he outrun that horse away. I looked at him. <laughs> he didn't ride the horse down. He ran out in front of it, amen. He got excited for the little Turn with me if you want. If you've got your Bible, and you want to turn with me. And this is a familiar one, and uh, but I'm going to read it because this is what the Lord laid on my heart. And uh, this is in Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, and verse number fourteen. And I'm going to leave this one with you real quick. But there's something I want to I want to share with you in this verse. Amen. Tonight. Amen. Hey, look here. The Bible says, and a lot of y'all know this verse already before I read it. But let's read verse 13. Amen. And see what first verse 13 says. It says, if, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain. <laughs> Amen. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, amen, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I want to share with you tonight. There's something, there's a key little thing in that verse that I want to, I want to try to share with you quickly. Huh? I love that. I love that healing part. I love that hearing from heaven part. I love that a man will turn from their wicked ways. I love that, amen. It shall humble themselves. But there's one word that holds the key to that holds that whole verse. Amen. That one little bitty word. Amen. And a lot of people think, well, that don't mean much. I'm telling you what, I'm preaching about little things that mean a lot. And that one little word is the first word that says, if, if my people. That means we've got a choice to make. Are we going to humble ourselves? Are we going to seek his face? Are we going to turn from our wickedness? I'm irritating our friend. And that if we will, you can take the if out. And God is saying when we humble ourselves, he'll hear from heaven. I wouldn't mind being in one good service where everybody quit waiting on everybody else to come. And they just went ahead and come. I've been in this service and I've heard people say, Lord, if somebody else will go, I'll go. Amen. If you'll send somebody else down there, I'll go too. How many of us have said that? How many of us already? You say, preacher, this <laughs> ain't much carpet room. Look, there's a whole bunch back here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There's a bunch of them. But look, I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. If we have to, preacher, we'll take up a collection for a few patches on the knees. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if we get a little dry stains, we might have a dry stain meeting one service. Amen. Where everybody, amen, that took the if out of this verse and said, I'm going to do what God asked me to do. I'm going to do it. It might be a little thing, but I'm here to tell you it'll mean a lot to you if you'll obey the Lord, my friend. 
got to hurry up to the third. And I ain't got the four, so you're almost halfway home. <laughs> Are you still with me? Say amen. amen. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 17 quickly tonight. I'm trying to preach short like Jerry does, so I'll be as popular as he is someday. <laughs> chapter 17. Let's get this. In verse 19, the Bible says this. Then came the disciples to Jesus' part and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you, unto you. How did this kind goeth not out but by prayer and feasting? How big's a mustard seed? Has anybody ever seen a mustard seed? Hey Amen. I've seen, I've been in services where they handed out mustard seeds. I mean, they're so little, they're littler than a BB, I believe. I mean, they're just so little, I don't know how, really what to compare it like. Hey Amen. If we can just have, hey Amen, that's some little something of faith. Called if, uh, the, if we have the faith and the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And the Bible says, so shall it be. Amen. Listen, it's a little thing, but it means a lot to God tonight, my friend. I thought about this verse, and I thought about what the Lord's done for us, and I'm bragging on the Lord. I'm bragging on the Lord. I want everybody to know that. But I pastor a church up there called Lower Branch, and it ain't far from here, just over that hill up there. Amen. If you could fly to it, you could be there in just a couple of minutes. Amen. And it's just over that hill. Amen, and I'll tell you what, amen, uh, it's so far. People say, where you pastor at? I said, it's so far out in the woods that, that they ain't got no cell phone service. I don't care who brings cell phone to church. As a matter of fact, I told, I, I told them a few times, if your cell phone rings, answer it. It's got to be God. <laughs> That's right. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're up the sticks, and we're up there in the woods, and amen. And I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, but I want you to know something. God is up there in them sticks, uh, and God is up there in them woods. Uh, and I want to share a little. I want to share a little something with you. Uh, five years ago, and I know a lot of you already heard this, but you're gonna hear it again. Five years ago, when I went up there, I uh, God laid it on the church's heart to add on to the size of the building. Well, you know what happened? America went through the Great Recession. It sure did. And while America was going through the recession, God was in the business meeting at Lower Branch saying we need to double the size of the church. <laughs> Amen. And somebody picked up their grain of mustard seed. And somebody said, I'm going to believe God. While the economy's going down, God is still going up. Amen. While the world's going sour, there's some sweet water we're drinking out of. Amen. I, I'm here to tell you tonight. I, and so God blessed us. And, and I'm going to tell you, up there in them sticks, we spent about a quarter of a million dollars. Now, don't you bad this place out. <laughs> I'm telling you, we spent a quarter of a million dollars. We didn't have no quarter of a million dollars. I'll tell you that right now. Calvin, you better say amen wherever you're sitting at. <laughs> we didn't have no quarter of a million dollars. But Ernie, we spent a quarter of a million dollars. I'm telling you what, we paved the parking lot. We added twice the building the size of the church house. We bought brand new pews. We bought, brought brand new carpet. Hey man, the, hey man, I'm telling you, how the Lord blessed our church. We refurbished the inside, put new lights up. Hey man, I'm here to tell you, hey man, God blessed us in so many ways, and we're just spending money. Hey man, and, and, and I said this here while back. Hey man, Sister Brenda, our treasurer, would get up and say what little bit we have every month, and I'd say in Jesus, hey amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen! I, I, we have just a little bit, but we had Jesus with a little bit. Amen. I'm here to tell you tonight, friend. Amen. Amen. There's some little things that mean a lot when you're looking to God tonight. 
Sunday, and uh, he said, you know what, he said, every one of us wasted a dollar or two every week, don't we? We wasted a dollar or two, and everybody had to, they got hooked, amen, he, he set the bait and set the hook, everybody said, yeah, he said, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do next week, every time you go to waste a dollar, don't waste it, bring it to church, and we're going to get a stack of dollars to, and see what a thousand one dollar bills look like, uh, instead of wasting a thousand, we're going to, we're going to bring it to God, one dollar bill at a time. So in the first week, he, he, he got his little box and all them dollar bills got in there. I mean, it's fun to watch them little kids. Them little kids run down the aisle with that dollar bill, put it in there. Hey, man, he, hey, man, the next thing you know, hey, man, it was getting a little thicker. And he was keeping all this his, at his house. He wasn't letting us see none of it. But finally, one morning, he came to church, and he had a big old stack of one dollar bills. church on that Sunday morning, somebody else had gave enough to make 2000 wow. <laughs> And then time service was over, Brother Jess, somebody else wrote a check to make it 3000 uh, You understand what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Amen. I mean, friend, we will take our little bit, amen, and, and realize what it means to God. It'll turn out to be a lot when we're looking to the Lord and going back to the bottom of the barrel, amen. Amen. Brother Calvin talked about his sickness, and, and uh, every time we was turned around, he was he was doing something like that to get a thousand dollars to run to the bank and pay on that note. And they say I ain't for sure about this, but they say he had like triple or four bypass heart surgery and a valve put in, and uh, he done so good. After about three days, they threw him out of the hospital. <laughs> Somebody said he was trying to have a fundraiser down there. <laughs> I, I, I went down in a bit. He said, Amen. Amen. And, uh, hey, man, but let me tell you this before I go to life. Let me tell you this. I want to share with you. I heard a man, I read a book or, or heard a man preaching one time. And, and some of these preachers as well study probably know who I'm talking about. I, but this man said, if a man will trust God, if there's something on the planet Pluto and you need it, God will get it from the planet Pluto. Amen. He'll get it to you. Amen. God's got a way of doing it. Amen. And keeping his promises when we can't see the way. Amen. I'll be sorry. Help me real fast. Church one Sunday morning, and, uh, and I stand there shaking hands. And this lady walks in the side door. She says, "Where's the preacher?" And somebody says, "He's over there." She come over. And she said, "Are you the pastor?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." And she said, uh, "My boss sent me down here, and here's you a thousand dollar check." And I said, "Lord help us." I said, "Who's the, who's your boss?" She said, "My boss owns these coal mines up here." in these hills, and he lives in Kentucky, and he said, he said the Lord told him to send you all a thousand dollars. And she said, I've got two or three more churches. I'm taking a thousand two too, but you're one of them, Ernie. I'll see you later, preacher. I mean, listen, some, some, to some people a thousand might mean a little, but to me, it meant a lot that Sunday morning. God was saying, Joy, I'm going to pay off that bill. Sunday, Callum brought a letter to church. And he got up and read this letter. And this letter was a man from Texas. I believe he lived down there next to San Antonio. It's about a thousand or more miles away. And he said he got up that morning and he was going to, going to work. Ernie. And he said he's driving to work. And the Lord said, send Laura Branch Baptist Church a love offering. Woo! He said, okay, Lord, I will. 
His papa went to church up there. Jay took him to church when he was little. He'd moved to Texas, and, and, and he'd sort of, you know, just been down there. But the Lord said, send the Lord Branch a love offering. And he said, okay, Lord, I will. And so he, he went to work and said he was fixing to go home. And when he was fixing to go home, he said, the Lord said, no, I want you to put that love offering in the mail today. And Calvin wrote, read us the letter. He said, the Lord told me to send you this love offering. He opened up the check, and I ain't going to say who it is because God's blessing him down there in San Antonio. And when we get to heaven, I'm going to give him a hug, amen, if I don't leave him for then. But I'm going to tell you, Calvin opened up that letter, and that man wrote us a check for $5,000. Amen. I'm here to tell you, if you've got the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Mountain, be thou removed, and it shall be done. If God's got to tell somebody in Texas to help you do it, he'll be glad to tell them. See, God, the Bible says, if God be for us, be against us. And I'm fixing to go to the last one. But before I do, Jerry, I've got to tell this. We had a 15-year note. Come on, brother. <laughs> we had a 15-year note. And we took up a love offering the first Sunday in September. And we was a 10 years and two months ahead of time of paying off the note. <laughs> <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, they got some gold up in New York City, but God's got a heaven for it. Amen. I'm going to tell you what tonight, friend. Amen. When you put your faith in God, He'll move the mountain for you. Right. I want to finish up with this. Appreciate you inviting me. When the devil says, Brother Luke, if he says, Luke, you're so silly. Why'd you want to have that revival out there in that field? I'll tell you. <laughs> you just tell that old devil, well, for preacher joy, I feel just as comfortable out here in an old field as I do in a cathedral. <coughs> Tell you tonight, friend, what I'm fixing to read to you tonight is the greatest event that's happened in the history of man. And I want to read this to you. It might be a little thing, it might be a little place, but it sure means a lot to me. In, in, in St. Luke chapter 23, and the Bible says in verse number uh, 32, and there was also two other male factors uh, led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, they crucified him. And the male factor, one on the right side, on the right hand, and the other on the left, and then said, Jesus, Father, uh, forgive them, for they know not uh, what they do. Amen. And they parted his garments. Amen. And cast lots. I'm here to tell you, there's a hill called Calvary tonight. I'm here to tell you, I've never been to the Grand Canyon. Amen. I've never been to the lot of the seven wonders of the world. But there's a wonder in my heart. Amen. That I've been to tonight. Amen. On November the 26th, 1975, I went to a place called Calvary. Amen. I'm glad I heard Father forgive him, for he knew not what he did. I'm glad, friend, that Calvary is a little hill. Amen. Right outside Jerusalem. But for somebody that really wants to get saved, it means a lot tonight. go to every holy spot they call holy and everything man has deemed to be holy but until you go by faith to Calvary tonight you'll never know what we're singing up here about you'll never know what these people's raising their hands about you'll never know what what this what these preachers are getting excited about and raising their voices about until you make a little step and you might say, well, preacher, what's one step going to do? 
I'm telling you right now, most people that when their hearts humble like it ought to be, when they take the first step, Jerry, they get saved before they get to the altar. Amen. I mean, friend, listen tonight. I mean, the only prior I knew to pray the night I got saved was, Lord, can you save somebody like me? That's all I remember praying. Lord, can you save somebody like me? It was a little thing, but for 38 years, it's meant a lot, my friend. About little things. That means a lot. Who's the county? Come on, get the song for you. Sing it tonight. If you wasn't happy, you ought to be now. I'm done. <laughs> but I want to give an invitation. I want to give an invitation. And I want to give an invitation like this. I'm wondering who among us tonight. Sixth trip, the seventh trip. See, I believe we're on the third or fourth. And God needs some folks that'll take a few more steps. God is looking for somebody that's looking for the cloud. See, we just want the rain so we can get in and play around in it and run back. But God is looking for somebody who's looking for the cloud tonight. And some of us, as I'm sure, it sounds like Preacher Luke's been preaching on. Some of us has gone to the fourth or fifth trip and we didn't think it was worth it. We didn't think it was the use. We thought, well, I, I went five times, what's the use? God's looking for somebody to make the sixth trip. God's looking for somebody to make the seventh. God is looking for somebody to take the if out of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Will you, take the, will you be one of them that takes the if out? Don't you want, don't you want your sins to be forgiven tonight? Don't you want for, amen, heaven to be opened up on your life again? Don't you want your land to be healed again? Aren't you ready tonight, amen, to feel God's presence again like you once felt it in your life? Yeah. It's time, now God said if my people, he's talking to the saved. Yeah. It's time we take the if out. God ain't just saying something to be saying. He meant it. He meant that. Yeah. The invitation tonight is this. God won't know who's going to bring that little grain of mustard seed to him. And say, Lord, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe you tonight. I'm going to believe you. I'm trusting, Lord, I've got a mountain in my life. But I'm going to bring, I'm going to put my faith in you. And then last of all, this is the invitation tonight. There might be somebody here that's not saved. You don't need to come talk to me. You don't need to really come and talk to any of these other preachers. You just need to come and bow down tonight at the feet of Jesus. He'll save you tonight. Can you believe that? He saved me. I didn't know John 3, 16. I didn't know Romans 10, 9, and 10. Oh, I didn't know there's 66 books in the Bible. I couldn't have told you there's 12 apostles. But I told the Lord this. I know I'm lost and I'm going to hell. Can you save somebody like me? And the answer from Calvary was, yes, I will.